Hello everybody, I'm Seth Panman. Welcome to 127th Street in Harlem. It's the People's Film Festival today. I'm gonna to be on the panel later discussing a variety of events, some stories that I've experienced. But right now, we're gonna to go to the red carpet. We're gonna meet filmmakers, directors, actors. So stay with me, we're gonna be doing that right now inside the People's Film Festival. I'm Seth Panman, back here at the red carpet with the People's Film Festival. I'm here with Jiggy Jada, and yes. she's gonna tell me about her movie, The Bully. How are you guys doing? My name is Jiggy Jada. I am the face of The Bully Project, and how The Bully Project came about started as a song that I did entitled Stop Bullying, and I wrote it, and it was based upon basically a young Muslim girl named Erica. Uh, actually, that's how it starts. Little Erica, first year in America, but everybody's prejudice keeps calling her terrorist. And then when my director heard it and my mom heard it, we decided to come together and create a film, which is all independent, it's all our own. I'm never gonna stop. I'm never gonna stop until somebody saves these children, so. That's the attitude, that's the attitude. How long has this movie been on the circuit? It's fairly new, but it's so popular. That's that's the thing. Like, and me, personally, I've been writing all my life. I didn't think that my song would turn into a film, but it's just so surreal when you're on a set. And I'm seeing these kids, these actual kids, they're acting out my words. There's no there's no real feeling in that. It's not just about a bully story. It's about Islamophobia. It's about homophobia. It's about parents and children and their differences, what they go through. So it shows why the bully bullies, and it also shows what the person that gets bullied goes through. So, it's almost like your version of West Side Story. I never thought of it like that, you but know? If, if so, that's a classic. So it's, That's what I'm saying. You got classic written all over you. But thank you. Now, can you give me a little lick, like a little like rap, just so I can get a feel of like, because I haven't heard your music I'll before. give you the vision. So, yeah. I'll, I'll finish off the rest of I'll, I'll give you some of the bully, yeah. and, and that's how we started the, yeah. uh, the actual yeah, give movie. Me, give, give me that. It starts off as, Little Erica, first year in America, but everybody's prejudice keep calling her terrorist. She wears a bronze necklace that represents her heritage. Assalamu alaikum to her teachers, they were scared of it. One kid in particular kept teasing and hitting her. He would laugh and spit on her, got other kids to pick on her. She barely understood the words, though she saw the hatred. Hid in the bathroom to escape from their faces. Tried to tell her parents, but they didn't understand. Her brother was a bully, so one time he cut her hand. She prayed to Allah for guidance, but in return, all she got back was silence. Sometimes the silence was louder than a siren. She never could adapt to the ways of the climate. And people, people back there are, are all bopping their heads and singing and stuff. So, if you guys aren't impressed already, just go home, okay? So, thank, thank you, you so seven. much. All right, nice seven meeting you. Seven's cool. All right, thank you. I'm sitting here with Nori and Jashim. They are the filmmakers for the movie 18 Seconds. Go ahead and tell me a little bit about the movie, guys. 18 seconds of film about based on his experience and the film is about crime and justice. And, and just give me a little bit more insight about the movie, kind of like what goes on and so on. Um, maybe he sh can. Jashim, go um, ahead and tell me about basically that. Basically it's just about a young lady who's being um, sexually assaulted on the train in her sleep. Okay. And, and you know, the, the purpose of the video was to bring aware that police are not doing what they're supposed to do when crime is brought to their attention. So the woman, the young lady was was sleeping, sleeping on the train yes. and somebody molested her. Yes, a and, stranger. And nobody was there to do anything about it. Even when it was reported, nobody did anything. Now, how did you capture that footage? Is this real footage? Real footage. How did you capture that footage? Via cell phone. Via cell phone. Yes. And was it you that caught the footage? Yes, I did. You filmed it? Yes, I did. And what time of day was this? This was about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I was on okay, my way Okay, so early in the morning. Yes. It's not, not the typical thing you see on the train every day. At all. Okay, I don't want people to think that when you ride the subway, this, this is, is what, what you're you going to get. Right? This doesn't come with your Metro card. Okay, I got you. Well, we're going to check it out. Okay. All right, pleasure. Thanks so much. Yeah, All right, take care. Thanks. What's going on? Well, I'm here with my cousins Sarah Holm and Natasha Story, and our Aunt Melinda, our dear Aunt Melinda, made a movie that was just shown in this festival. Now, can you tell me a little bit about the movie, like the title, the name, and, and maybe just a little bit about it? Yeah, it was called Middle Passage Pilgrimage, and it's about um, some pilgrims who retraced the triangle of the slave trade. We had the beginning interview with your niece, right? Okay. So we just wanted to get the follow-up. I wanted to know a little bit more about you and what your movie was about. So, uh, very simply, it's about visionaries who look at the legacy of slavery by retracing the old slave trade routes back to Africa. It was a year-long journey. A core group of 60 made this trip, and they had nothing. No money, no corporate backing, no tickets, no transportation. They walked. And they walked from, from here to 
Where? Watch from the Leverett Peace Pagoda, which is uh, in the Northampton um, Amherst area in the middle of Massachusetts. They walk to Boston, down the seacoast, New York City, all the way down to New Orleans. And from New Orleans, they took a boat to Cuba. And in Cuba, they walked through Cuba, then they got to Haiti and walked through Haiti, and then they got to Puerto Rico, got to Puerto Rico, and they got stuck. But a few hardy souls stepped out on faith, made it all the way down to Brazil, knowing or hoping to find passage across. That's all I'm telling you. You'll have to go to the Mount Vernon Film Festival to see the rest. If you're not already impressed, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Go. Seth, you're, you're not only a snowboarder, but you're also a filmmaker. Correct. So tell us about your film. Basically, there's a mysterious death that happens with mm -hmm. the previous director of this organization. Right. So a new director is hired. He's a professional skateboarder. Right. He's new to New York City. He really doesn't know what this city has in store for him. Right. But he jumps on board. He wants a job. Right. He jumps on board. He gets this job right away. And uh, he's in it with this organization where these mysterious deaths start happening. Right. And uh, there's some food poisoning element, or at least we wow. lead the audience to believe there is. Wow. But there's really a deeper picture going on right. and uh, it involves a beautiful woman and um, of course some it does. Re religious <laughs> aspects I mean these are all favorite things of mine you know religion beautiful women poisoning you know stay away from street meat right, right and right. Uh, that's it you know so I don't want to give too much right, more away right, but right. that's pretty much it in a nutshell Wow so look for it it's gonna be poisoning New York when it comes out you heard it here first at the People's Film Festival thank you no thank you